Holy S. <gasps> Welcome back to another episode of the Focal Length Challenge where we break down the strengths and weaknesses of different focal lengths while shooting a variety of subjects uh, just to give you guys a better idea of what they do, what they look like, and just kind of help you guys make a decision on what lenses or focal lengths to add to your photography kit. Now this series got kind of put on hold because of the pandemic with stay at home orders. We weren't really able to get out and shoot a lot of stuff, a lot of photography, and in turn we've been making videos about our house. So I'm super excited to bring this series back around now that we have a little bit more freedom to move about and travel. So in today's video, we're going to talk about 50 millimeters. This is one of my favorite focal lengths, especially for portraits. We'll get into that a little bit later. So we're going to go all the way back to the Catskills. Chris and I were there a couple of months ago. We rented an Airbnb and did a little trip. Uh, we made three videos. So if you want to check them out, I'll link them up here. Commence shooting with the 50 mil. Let's go. This is a series, a non-technical workshop series where we explore different focal lengths while shooting a variety of subjects. This is the Focal Length Challenge. We are in this Airbnb. Our stuff is everywhere. It's been pouring rain since we got here and we had all these intentions of going outside and shooting out around the grounds, but it's really raining. So today we're challenging ourselves by shooting 50 mil, but we're also going to be challenging ourselves by seeing what we can shoot inside the cabin. Damn, that's a lazy guy. Oh, yeah. Try to get this guy off the couch. She made me very tired. We're gonna shoot some interior lifestyle stuff, but also interior photos. 50 millimeters is really great for portraits and lifestyle photography and product stuff, but it's also really great for the detail shots of houses and homes and stuff like so that. Also, there's a teeny tiny baby deer. We'll try to get a picture of him later, but I don't wanna get too close. First thing we're gonna do, they have a kind of a cute kettle here at the Airbnb, so we're gonna make a hot chocolate, and then we're going to just shoot the progress of that with the 50. So I'm using the window light to my advantage here, and I'm just shooting like F2, between F2.8 and F1.4. Now, do you want hot chocolate or what? Yeah, hot chocolate. Do you want like, That fits my head really well. Maybe we can bring the cup over to the table and shoot like you pouring yeah. the okay. powder. And maybe we can use this like cutting board to cover the hole on the table. Oh yeah, that looks nice. There's not that much powder in this packet. <laughs> Oops, I missed. <laughs> All right. You're not supposed to take pictures of me porter songs. I'm a slob right now. I just woke up off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> These are close ups. They're supposed to be close ups of the Yeah, well, they're not now. We're going to have to do something about uh, this wig. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. That's a lived in look. I might move you to the couch. Someone photograph me. <sighs> I'll show my bottom. All right. Time to finish your hot chocolate, and then we're going to go out into the rain. We're moving locations. Chris has requested a outfit change. To the A-frame, we go. Like that, I stepped over the tall grass as per your request. No, it looks like you walked right through it. <laughs> yeah, stand square on with it. Forward, five feet, slow. All right. Oh, this auto thing is so annoying. I'm gonna go out the door. 50 millimeters, she's tight. She's a 50 millimeter challenge. You can't run, Peckham. You can't run. I'm coming for ya. Ew, this is creepy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shoot some photos of the outside of this cabin because it's gorgeous. Okay, so I'm officially freaked out. I had, there, I, felt, I saw a tick on the A-frame, there was a tick on me, and a tick on Chris's boot, and I don't wanna go outside anymore. <laughs> Uh, ew! You didn't believe me of the ticks. You're like, there's no ticks. No, I didn't say that. There's a tick right I on the. Just say there's ticks. Whatever, man. It's and part of nature. Yeah. Uh, this is what our place looks like every time we get a rental, just covered in our stuff. We did manage to get a photo of the baby deer. There are actually two babies there, and the mother was kind of hanging out. We didn't get too close, and we did not touch the deer. Definitely recommend not approaching wildlife, especially dangerous wildlife, and definitely do touch the wildlife either. This little peach was so cute, just hiding underneath the uh, trees. All right, so let's talk about 50 millimeters on a full frame camera. Now we're looking at the equivalent for a crop body camera is about 80 millimeters, depending on the crop factor of said camera. You're 
confused about um, crop versus full frame. We actually made a video about that, breaking it all down. I'll leave it up here if you wanna check it out. So 50 millimeters is probably not a focal length. You're gonna to wanna to add to your kit right away if you're just starting out because it isn't the most versatile. It's definitely a bit more telephoto. However, if you can cover that range in a zoom lens, say with like a 24 to 70, or a 17 to 55. You're getting that 50 millimeter focal length in a more versatile lens, and that is probably best if you are just starting out. Now, if you're a bit of a seasoned photographer and you're looking to upgrade, you got a lot of zoom lenses, no primes, then 50 mil is definitely a really great one to add your kit. While it's not the most versatile in terms of field of view, it is more telephoto, it can shoot a lot of things really well. It's been one of my favorite focal lengths for a few years for a number of reasons. It's really fun to shoot with because it's not so wide. You kind of have to go hunting for these photographs because it is a little more telephoto. I love it for portrait work, especially at F1.2, F1.4. Now some people do not like to shoot really shallow depth of field, but I just say, you know what? You got it, shoot it throw the rules out the window. The more you adhere by the rules of photography, the less chances you're gonna be able to explore creativity in photography. So this focal length is really great for places. And when I mean places, I mean room shots, uh, detail shots, interior shots. I'm getting room detail shots. I love using the 50 millimeter lens because it lets me focus on a detail in a space or in a room or on a product while creaming out the rest of the surrounding areas. And it also gives a little bit of a different look from the wide shots that we're used to seeing with interior photography. You're seeing a little tease of something versus the entire space. So if we look at this photo here, I just shot a detail shots of the sheets because I thought they looked super cozy and comfy. That's not normally a shot that I would take, but it's kind of like one of those moments where you kind of evoke this feeling where you want to crawl into the bed, cozy up and look at the window and enjoy the rain. You do have to step back to fill the frame and you do have to step back to make sure that you're focusing. The close focusing distance is not that close. You want to focus closer, you're going to want to move into a max macro lens for something like that. You can imagine that 50 millimeters is probably not the best choice for a tight space. So I'm likely not choosing a 50 millimeter focal length for a landscape. And if I was looking for a lens for landscapes, I'd probably be looking around 24 millimeters or 16 millimeters, depending on the type of landscape that I'm shooting, or I would go even more telephoto, 200, 400, 600 range, but I'm definitely choosing it for interior detail shots. I'm choosing it for food photography, product photography, and portrait photography. Okay, I said portraits probably a hundred times in this video, so let's let's talk about portraits. 50 mil portraits, my favorite. Absolutely shines for portrait photography and headshots. So I shot this portrait of Jevin Dovey during camera camp, and it's a more traditional kind of headshot, shoulders up type shot. Definitely use the shallow depth of field here. I like that the focus is on the eye and then it just creams away kind of towards his ears. Now, not everyone is a fan of that look, but I am. And that's kind of the type of portrait work I've been doing for my entire photography career. 50 mil, great for kind of a headshot, shoulders up type shot. Um, if you're shooting headshot, like business headshots, maybe don't go for the more artsy shallow depth of field. You might want to shoot at something like F4 or higher just to make sure everything is in focus. And then moving over to the shot of YC imaging, which is a little bit further back. So it's not a traditional shoulders up headshot, but we're kind of getting a kind of three quarters shot. He has no distortion. He looks how he looks. And that's the beauty of 50 mil. There's just not a lot of distortion, which is why it's great for portraits. Before we started this YouTube channel, Chris was doing men's fashion on Instagram and I was doing all of his fashion photography and I loved it. And I literally did not take the 50 mil lens off my camera ever. We'll take a look at this photo of Chris um, sitting downtown St. John's. In the background just looks bigger. It's creamed out a little bit. He's in focus and there's just no distortion. And then again, shooting between 1.2 and three, you're still getting that shallow depth of field. You're getting that separation between the subject and the background, which is something I like to see when it comes to fashion photography. Not only is the 50 mil focal length good for headshots, shoulders up headshots, three quarter shots, full body shots, sitting shots, but it's also great for close up shots to a point. We have to be aware with a lens like 50 millimeters that we're not gonna be able to focus that close. So there's this balance of getting close 
but being in focus. So there is this kind of sweet spot where you can get these kind of detail shots, like this shot of Chris's tie with his layers of his jacket. When we were shooting fashion, we shot these wide shots of the entire outfit, but then there were also these like detail moments, kind of just like there are with room design, with home design. It's the same thing with fashion. There's all these layers and little moments that people put on their outfits that just bring things together. So we talked about places, we talked about room photography, interior photography, detail shots, we talked about portraits, fashion work, detail shots in terms of clothes. Um, but now let's talk about things. I love 50 mil for food photography, lifestyle photography, travel photos. It shoots a lot of things good, just isn't the most versatile in terms of how much you can see through the camera. So we'll take a look at this photo I took of this Mercedes Benz when we were in Vancouver. With shooting with the 50, you can see here that the background is a little bit bigger. If I had shot this with a wide lens, that would have looked as if it was pushed back a little further, and then you would have seen some distortion on the car. So with 50, you're not getting any distortion in the car. Had I shot this with 16, the front of the bumper would have looked more exaggerated, which might not be ideal for car photography. Now I'm not an expert in car photography. I haven't done a lot of it. If you want to know more about that, check out Chris Howe. He's great at that. 50 millimeters was great for the car because it showed the car as it looked. Then moving on to food photography, with the kind of telephoto-ness of the 50, you're able to cream out that background quicker than if you were shooting with a wider lens. So if you're in a tight space, if you can step back a few feet and take the photo at a shallow depth of field, then you're gonna get this nice look where you have this creamy depth of field that kind of just drops off pretty quick. So that's my little breakdown of 50 millimeters uh, for photography. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Some people don't love shooting telephoto and some people don't love shooting wide. I happen to really, really love the focal lengths between 16 millimeters and 50. Those are my favorites, those are my go-to. That's where I feel comfortable for photography. Anything beyond that, more telephoto than that, is outside of my comfort zone. Now I did just pick up a 200 to 600 last year, which I've been really loving for some nature stuff. Most of my career I spent shooting at 16 millimeters on a full frame or at 50 millimeters on a full frame. So I'm very heavily practiced in those areas with that focal length. Um, any, anything more telephoto than that is challenging for me because it's just not my style. So hopefully we can incorporate some more telephoto focal lengths in this series down the road. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in, checking out, you know, 600 millimeters, see what that's all about. Before I leave you, I just wanted to talk about our photo club called Pixel Lens. It's a Facebook group, private Facebook group of about 15,000 members. And we just kind of been trying to build this community over there of photographers and videographers of all levels so that we can answer each other's questions, but also share our work and get feedback and critiques. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, it is a free group, but you just have to answer some questions. So I know that you're not going to spam the account. Please read the rules before you post because we are very strict on what we allow to be posted on the group's wall. We have share threads every week, critique threads every week, YouTube share threads every week as well. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave the link in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, catch you on the next one.